Hello. Thanks again for joining us on our latest edition. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to the show. My name is Bill Fairman and this is Wendy Sweet, my lovely sister and business partner. So we're going to talk today and oh, first of all, like and subscribe. We need likes. We need you to subscribe to our show. Our website, by the way, is carolinahardmoney.com. So in this, this episode, we're going to talk about the differences between a hard money loan and a bank loan. And while they're both necessary yeah. at what parts uh, or place in time are they necessary? Right. Well, people ask me that all the time. Um, you know, why would I not get a, a conventional loan? First of all, you need to understand what a hard money loan is, right? So hard money is a short term high interest loan that allows the borrower to buy a property and fix it up. So the way the hard money loans work is they are based off of what the after repaired value would be, not what you're purchasing it for, but what the after repaired value would be. We take a list of the repairs that you're going to do to a house and then we turn it over to an appraiser and they do an appraisal based off of those items being completed. Once that is completed, then we take 70% of that amount, what it would sell for, and that's what we base the loan off of, is that up to that amount. So we lend you all the money to buy it and all the money to fix it up as you're, long as you're under that 70%. If you're going through a bank, a bank is going to lend you based on what you're paying for the house. If it's an investor house, you're going to have to put down 20% at least, no. and in some cases, 25, no, right? That's if it's, they'll lend it to you at all. Yeah, because they can't, can't need work, right? <laughs> yeah, if, if there's too many repairs that need to be done, they won't do the loan at all. That's exactly right. And that is the key is, you know, bank financing is great. The interest rates are low. It's, it's you know, something you can stay in long term. If you're a buy and hold kind of person and, and you want to get a bank loan where you're going to buy that house and rent it out, and, and your repairs may only be, you know, 5000 or maybe even $10,000. It's not worth it really to get a hard money loan for something like that. You're better off using your own cash to go ahead and do those repairs. And of course, it depends on how bad those repairs are. If you're replacing cabinets or fixing up countertops and that kind of thing, that's, that's fine. That, a bank doesn't care about that. They don't like holes in the ceiling, yeah. right? floors that definitely not in the roof right <laughs> on the roof that's that kind of hurts ceiling's okay that's not right they don't want to see you know bathrooms that have been leak leaking for 20 years and there's there's a hole in the floor the bathtub will fall right through or you know you've got plumbing that isn't working at all the hvac has to be working it has to be livable for right. a bank to do the loan you have to be able to live in it so you know even the windows can't be busted no. out don't get me wrong. You can get bank financing for a rehab house, but in most cases, it's not going to be investor financing for right. that unless you get a commercial loan to do it. With. Right. Right. And at the same time, let's talk about time. Yeah. <laughs> it takes banks just a little while longer to do a loan. You know, you're looking at 30 to 45 days for them to underwrite and get that loan closed where hard money it's two weeks or less. That, that's the key. The thing about hard money is the speed and being able to get the money for the repairs on that house, right? And, and back when it was a buyer's market, mm. it was okay to take longer because people weren't buying houses up like right. they are now. Now inventory is really tight. Right. And you, you're competing with cash buyers mm -hmm. that can just write a check tomorrow. That's right. So you, you have to get the hard money. I, I want to mention one thing you, you keep stressing high interest and it is a high interest loan. Yeah. But it's also interest only loan. Yes. And the interest is based on 12 payments. It's an annualized loan. So you're talking annualized meaning throughout the year. Right. So there's 12 payments. Mm -hmm. So if you had a 12% interest rate, and you only made six payments. Right. What's your interest? Yeah. What, how much interest did you pay? It would be half of whatever that it 12 would be was, six. right? Yeah. So it's not as high as you think it is, but the rate of interest is high. Yeah. Uh, again, it's speed. If you and kept it for no 12 months, it'd be, it'd be 12%. Right. If you kept it six months, it'd be 6%. Guess what? If you knocked it out in three months, Woohoo! 
Woo, you we're just glad paid three percent. That's right. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's exactly right. You're bringing less money out of your pocket when you do a hard money, right? For a bank, you're going to have to put that down payment. Usually, twenty percent for an investor loan. In some cases, twenty five percent. But with a, a hard money loan, with us doing a hard money loan, the only thing you're bringing to the table is, are the closing costs. About seven to eight percent of the total loan amount is what you're going to bring. There are some hard money companies out there that will lend you maybe 90% of your purchase price and 100% of the rehab, or they might lend you 90% of the purchase and 90% of the rehab. It really depends on the hard money company, right? And, and Yeah. And in reality, we might require you to have 10% down. It depends on the deal. It might be far, when, far out in the middle of nowhere. When, when you're, when you're doing a hard money loan, we look at everything globally, mm -hmm. your income, your, the assets you have, you know, the money that you have in the bank, mm -hmm. your credit. We care about your, your ability to pay it back. The property itself. We're mm -hmm. looking at all that and we're making a risk assessment right. on the entire project. And if you're off a little bit over here, you have other things over here that can make up for it. That's right. right. And sometimes we have to make a deal. Yeah. <laughs> It's a little bit outside of our comfort zone. Comfort. If, comfort. <laughs> it's a little bit outside of our That's comfort zone. That's a really zone. small town. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll make up for this by perhaps you bringing a little bit more money. Right, right. Right. Or, yeah. So if the, the population is really low, which means if we have to take it back tomorrow, remember that's how we think. Right. We have to take it back tomorrow. It's going to be harder for us to sell it because there isn't as large a target market in podunk, North Carolina a as, comfort. A, as a comfort, North Carolina, <laughs> that's right. As opposed to, you know, being in downtown Charlotte, it just, it makes a, a big difference as to where that's located. The, the other thing that we really care about is your ability to pay it back. We're underwriting the borrower just as hard as we're underwriting the house itself. So we care about that. That's what we care about. Other hard money lenders are, are the same way. They're, they're, we've all kind of got thought in mind is, you know, how long is it going to take us to sell this if we have to take it back tomorrow? We're, we all kind of think down that same path. And, you know, although we require payments on a monthly basis because we want our borrowers to have to write a check every month. We want them to really think about, hey, I'm paying for this. I need to get this house finished and get out of this loan. Where There are some lenders out there, though, that won't require you to make a payment during the time that you have that loan and they're going to allow you to pay it at the payoff. Understand you're probably going to pay more on an interest rate and they'll probably lend you less money, but it might be something that works for that particular deal that you have, right? Well, we want you to have uh, in your head, I need to get this done quickly mm. because the longer you keep a deal or a loan out there working, the more overhead you're paying. That's right. Right. So, there has been instances where we've had people say, for example, I'm not going to take this offer because I can get a thousand dollars more. <laughs> what are you thinking? They didn't take the offer and it took them two more months to sell it. That's right. And it cost them three grand more. Yeah. But they made 2000 the more. <laughs> but they got that price up a thousand dollars. Bird in the hand. It's a bird in the hand. So uh, one of the things we love to encourage people to do is to look for private money in your local market or from your local sphere of influence. Yes. Private money is going to be less expensive than working with a hard money company like ourselves or anyone else because we have a business. Bank. Uh, we have overhead. We have employees. Mm -hmm. um, we have to make a living. A private lender, in most cases, is going to be someone who has an IRA. They're looking for a, a greater return. Mm -hmm. They can lend that money to you. That said, most private lenders do not have infinitely deep pockets. That's right. <laughs> and eventually, they're going to run out of money right. or there's an opportunity that comes along the line. And this is why we tell people to use hard money instead of their own money or a bank because opportunities come along and if all your money is tied up in another uh, deal, you can't take advantage of the new one that right, comes up. Right. And 
having hard money lenders in your back pocket allows you to scale your business. If you had, for example, a hundred thousand dollars and you can use 25,000, you know, four times, mm. right? Yes. On four different houses, or you can use a hundred thousand dollars on one property, which one is going to make you more money? Mm. Even if you're paying finance charges and, and interest and, and whatnot. That's right. Well, obviously it's going to be the four that, that you can get. Right. 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 And you, you said something really important that it's, I did, you did. It wow. was just one thing, just one thing. So <laughs> <hit> my <laughs> it's having, you said hard money lenders in your back pocket. I don't really love that term that he uses. <laughs> really. It's about a relationship. It's, you, you need a relationship, not only with hard money lenders, but you need a relationship with private money lenders and a relationship with banks. It's important to use all of those options when you're investing. Sure. And, and what I think is really cool is houses or investments, I should say, are, they all have their own little personality. Yeah. They all have their own little deal. It might be a great seller finance deal, right? Mm -hmm. Where the seller's willing to finance a good majority of it, you use a private money lender to put down the down payment, share that down payment with you. There's so many different ways that you can put a deal together and it just matches whatever works for that particular property. Yep. And, and Take the opportunities as they come and you're <clears throat> choosing the opportunity that makes the most sense for that particular deal. That's right. And, and really, well, how do I find a private money lender? It's not like they have websites and they don't. So really the best way to meet people like that is get involved in your local real estate That's investor group, yep. whether it's through the national RIA or meetup groups that you have in your city. I, I lead a group in uh, Charlotte uh, that's been going on for 17 years now called Sunrisers. It's a faith-based group. We have anywhere from 50 to 55 people that show up there every week for breakfast. And it, you know, we do a five minute devotional and then we have somebody coming in and talk about real estate. Hard money loans. Yeah. Well that too. <laughs> but uh, like this past week, it was based on IRAs this week coming up. It's going to be somebody that's doing multi-unit properties for college kids. So it, there's just student all, housing. yeah, student housing. I knew it had a professional word. That sounds so much better. So, and we'll, we'll do one on short-term vacation rentals or executive rentals and commercial buildings, all, all kinds of stuff like that. And you host a group uh, once a month, right? Yes. It's called the Rock Hill group. Yes. <laughs> and he serves pizza. It's the Rock Hill subgroup <laughs> of the Metro Linaria. And we have it once a month. And we have a pretty good crowd. We have it uh, in our conference room. There's typically 15 to 20 people come. And I encourage you to get a t-shirt printed that says need Got money. money. And then mark. if you have money to lend, get a t-shirt that says got money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to ask, right? Yeah. You got to ask. So but those keep, are just keep in mind, it, You go to the, your first meeting to meet somebody and you're asking for money, you're not getting any money. That's right. <laughs> and everything you do in real estate, well, any business for, for that matter is relationship. Absolutely. Unless yeah. you're selling products on Amazon. <laughs> yeah. It's a relationship business. That's right. And people need to get to know you. Don't, don't rush it. Don't push it. Learn as much as you can get to know folks, mm -hmm. let them get to know you and you'll be amazed at the opportunity. That's right. That come and our way. The, the, the only thing else I'd like to, add on the, the difference in the bank loans is the amortization. Yeah. So with uh, most hard money loans, they're going to be similar to a line of credit, mm -hmm. although it's not a revolving uh, line of credit. It, they're still both interest only mm -hmm. and your bank loans are going to be, you know, fully amortized, which means a certain amount of money is going towards payment, a certain amount or towards principal, certain, certain amount of money is going towards interest. When you're dealing in a line of credit or, a hard money loan or a private lender, you're not paying any principal. You're just paying interest. And then when you refinance or when you pay it off, you're paying all the principal back at one time, plus any interest that you owed in the, in the meantime. Right. And check for prepayment penalties. That's really an important question yeah, the, to ask. The, the vast majority of hard money lenders on residential loans mm -hmm. are not going to have a prepayment penalty, but you still need to look. Uh, it is more typical on a commercial piece of property, mm -hmm. a 
uh, multi-tenanted, let's just say office building or mixed use or self-storage or multifamily, they are typically going to have a prepayment penalty. Right. So that, that's something that you need to uh, look at before you make any deal. That's right. And right. I always, I always push seller financing. If, if you don't know if you can get seller financing, unless you ask, you need to find out what the seller is going to do with the money. And you don't know that unless you ask. So again, it's about even building a relationship with the person that's selling you that property or that building or what about finding out uh, about seller financing. If I wrote you a check for a hundred thousand dollars and I put in a pile of hundred, if I put a hundred thousand dollars cash there on this table, would it be would there it, would it, next it, week? Would it be either that was next, John Graham next year? That's right. Yeah. It was John Graham. Our, our CPA in business coach. Yeah. And after they chuckle about it and they say, well, you know, I'm using it for my kids tuition or right. whatever. And I only needed 20,000 for that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it could be, you could be making them payments. That's right. That's so, anyway. right. There's always a way to put into place the best option for the financing for that particular house. Absolutely. And there's no one way to get it done. So did we cover everything you I think? I think we did. So if you liked it, like us, please, right. And yep. subscribe. What's to, the website? To our Carolina Hard Money. Hard money. Dot com. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe to our podcast. If you haven't already, That's share right. on your social Tell media. Tell all your friends. Yep. And the next show that we're going to do, we are going to cover what? How we help investors. No, we're going to talk about IRAs and the best place to put IRA money. I don't want to talk about IRA money. Right, no, well, I'm just kidding. We'll be well, happy to talk about IRA money. That'd be a great one. Yeah. All right. Because there's a lot of different there's uh, a ton strategies yeah. involved in yeah. uh, IRA money, uh, HSAs. That's right. Coverdale accounts. Accounts, yeah, yeah. There's all kind of stuff that can be self-directed that people don't know about. That's right. And one of the things you find if if you want to become a lender, and by the way, we're happy to teach you mm -hmm. how to become a lender. And one of the things you have to know as a lender is all about IRA and how they work. You, you have to right. be almost as much of an expert as the. IRA custodian is. Or us. <laughs> That's what I was saying. That's right. <laughs> anyway, it was a lot of fun. Thanks again for joining us. Subscribe. Subscribe like us. Like CarolinaHardMoney.com. Have a great day. See you soon. Thank you very much for joining us. Hope you had a good time. Got a little <laughs> knowledge as well. Don't forget to subscribe and like us. And if you like to see some more episodes, uh, you can go over here perhaps up here or perhaps down here, but there's a place to press to get to the other episode. <laughs> Enjoy.